Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be going through the transport across cell membrane topic of the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. So you require to know of the basic structure of the cell membrane uh, for eukaryotes. So th this includes the cell surface membrane, which surrounds the cell as well as the um, cell membrane, which surrounds the organelles, um, for example, uh, for the um, for the chloroplast so this is the the basic structure and we'll be going through all of these different components in more detail now so this is also called the fluid mosaic model and starting off uh, we have the phospholipid bilayer so um, there is more into this in the lipids topic so ultimately what it is is that there are hydrophobic fatty acid tails facing inwards so uh, these fatty acid tails are facing inwards so oh, it's a because there are two um, phospholipids it's called a bilayer because this is a phospholipid and this is a phospholipid so there are two of them that's why we call it a bilayer and so the hydrophobic tails are facing inwards and the hydrophilic so the water attracting um, heads are facing outwards so how, that's how they are arranged in the cell membrane and this phospholipid bilayer allows the passage of small lipid soluble and um, uncharged molecules so they can just pass through um, these gaps in the cell in the phospholipid bilayer so moving on to the channel proteins here so these enable the charged substances to diffuse across membranes so the charged substances as they can't and um, just pass through the phospholipid bilayer these channel proteins um, enable the charged substances to diffuse uh, across the membrane so as you can see these positive ions are going through the channel protein and the, um, you're required to know that the water has aquaporins uh, which allows them to move through phospholipid bilayer and these are also channel proteins all right moving on so the carrier proteins now so these for example this one here so these have a binding site and uh, when something binds to it, they, these change shape, which allows the substances to pass through and we will be going through that in more detail later. But for now, it aids the transport of ions and polar substances and by facilitated diffusion and, or it can be active transport. So it can be either by facilitated diffusion, so it doesn't require ATP, but it can also be uh, with active transport which would require ATP and um, so carrying on uh, we can have polished uh, and cholesterol so this here so this decreases the permeability of the membrane so it would restrict the movement of other molecules in the cell membrane so uh, this basically makes the cell me the cell membrane more stable so it's harder uh, it doesn't move around as much as it would do without with cholesterol and then we have the glycolipids so as you can see here so it's basically a carbohydrate um, attached to a phospholipid so the phospholipid within the membrane so carbohydrates um, you can call that glyco and then lipid from that phospholipid so that forms a glycolipid and this is important in the cell recognition glycoprotein so this is basically a protein attached to a phospholipid so in this example and um, it's important in cell recognition again so these can act as antigens uh, for example and next we have enzymes so these enzymes are embedded in membranes so they're not mobile they can't move around they only stay in that membrane and we can also have these receptors um, so these can allow the cell to respond to different stimuli for example, a hormone such as insulin uh, might uh, bind with that receptor um, to allow the, the cells to react. So first, moving on to simple diffusion. So this is basically the diffusion of substances down a concentration gradient from high um, concentration to low concentration. And uh, this process, uh, so what happens is the substances randomly pass between the phospholipid bilayer. So if I have a small um, lipid soluble substances, a substance which isn't charged, 
kind of non-polar it can just pass through there and uh, pass through the phospholipid bile layer to the other uh, part and this is randomly done so this is a key word it's randomly um, it, it's not in a specific pattern or anything it's randomly done so this can also come back um, and this is how and the the simple diffusion occurs and again this is passive so it, this does not require energy this does not require energy in the form of ATP and only small lipid soluble non-polar and non-charged substances can pass through so there are not a lot of substances and that would that would be able to pass through that's why the the cell membrane the phospholipid bilayer acts as a barrier and uh, to the different kind of things so the facilitated diffusion now so this is a uh, slightly different so this is the uh, diffusion of substances but through a carrier or it's through a channel protein this time and this again is down a concentration gradient from high to low concentration and uh, this again is passive um, but slightly different from the simple diffusion so uh, as concentration of molecule increases so as concentration of the substances that's passing through increases the rate of diffusion would increase until the point of saturation so the point of saturation is basically when all the carrier proteins so where the car carrier or channel proteins which are required for this facilitated diffusion when they're all filled up when they're all saturated and um, this is when the rate of diffusion can no longer increase so for example this the simple diffusion there is a um, a positive correlation between them um, um, and it's directly proportional so as you keep increasing the concentration the rate of uptake increases but this is not the same for facilitated diffusion as you can see the the line is curved it's not directly proportional because at one point it will keep increasing but at one point uh, it will reach the point of saturation so there um, where the where all the and uh, the carrier or the channel proteins basically the transport proteins will be saturated and they can no longer um, move diffuse the substance and that's why the rate of uptake will stay the same it will not increase any further so we can also have um, osmosis so this is just the movement of water and so this is only for water now so this this is down the water potential gradient so it's not um, concentration gradient this time you have to use the keyword water potential gradient from a high water potential to a low water potential and this is through a partially permeable membrane now this is a keyword it's through a partially permeable membrane and basically what water potential is is the tendency the relative tendency of water to move from one place to another so um, how likely water is likely to move from one place to another so moving on to active transport now so this is basically the movement of substances against a concentration gradient so this is against now this is not across a concentration gradient this is not down a concentration gradient this is against a concentration gradient from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration and this requires a specific carrier protein as well as ATP now so it's not passive this time it requires energy and the energy is provided by the ATP and so what happens is that the uh, for example this is a carrier protein so what happens is the for example this substance needs to pass through to the other side so it would travel up to there but then this this is blocked it can't travel any further now and uh, because there it's blocked so what happens is that the ATP hydrolysis occurs and it changes the shape of the carrier protein so for example from there to there and um, now as you can see that it's not blocked from there anymore it's blocked from there uh, it's blocked from a bit higher up so now the substance can pass through because uh, it's not blocked anymore so ATP hydrolysis basically changes the shape of the carrier protein and uh, to allow movement so this is how the ATP is used now the co-transport so this is a new one from GCSE so uh, you need to be aware of the example of the absorption of glucose now glucose 
into the epithelial lining of the small intestine. So just going through the example, so what, what happens there? So we have the lumen of small intestine, so this is basically the small intestine um, epithelial cell and blood. So what we need, we had glucose in the lumen of small intestine and we want to get it into the blood. So how do we do that? So what happens first is we have the sodium ions uh, which which are in the epithelial cells. So there, there are um, quite a few sodium ions in the epithelial cells and these are transported out of the cell into the blood. So they, how they're transported is by Again, active transport, so um, by a carrier protein. So what happens is that they pass, they go through this carrier protein, then the ATP hydrolysis occurs, the carrier protein changes shape, and they end up um, in the blood. So they will be in the blood now. So what this does is this creates a concentration gradient because uh, the the uh, the uh, and the sodium ions are not in the epithelial cells anymore. But there are a lot of sodium ions in the lumen of small intestine so this creates a concentration gradient as there is a higher concentration of sodium ions in the lumen of small intestine but there are very few um, in the small intestine so creating a concentration gradient what happens next is that the sodium ions diffuse into the cell through um, co-transport protein so and this is now passive as it's down a concentration gradient so from a high concentration there so these would travel to the epithelial cell via the co-transport protein so but what also happens is they they are coupled with glucose so as one uh, as one um, sodium ion trans is it travels and um, through the through the co-transport protein the glucose also travels so for every uh, one sodium ion there will be a glucose as well so this is coupled with glucose and therefore the concentration of glucose in the cell and uh, starts to rise so there will be a higher concentration of glucose in the cell and the glucose will ultimately diffuse out of the epithelial cell so it would diffuse out of the epithelial cell by facilitated diffusion through the channel protein so this channel protein again it's down a concentration gradient because you do not have um, a lot of glucose in the blood so this will diffuse out of the cell by facilitated diffusion so all of these glucose will diffuse out and um, through the channel protein into the blood so that's how um, the glucose is transported from the lumen of small intestine uh, into the blood so you need to be aware of the factors affecting the rate of diffusion. So first, temperature. So it basically increases the kinetic energy. So the, uh, the uh, particles move faster. So there will be a faster movement. Next, surface area. So the higher the surface area, the more space there will be for substances to pass through. Um, so more substances will be, will be able to pass through. An example is the microvilli in the small intestine for absorption, such as the absorption of sodium ions. So you can see in there, so the, the uh, microvilli, they're arranged like, um, like this, instead of just being like a straight cell membrane. So this would increase the surface area, and so more of the more of absorption can occur. Next, we have concentration of the water potential gradient. So the higher and the difference, the higher the rate of diffusion um, would be. And um, thickness of the exchange surface. So the thinner the surface is, the faster the substances can pass through. So an example is of the alveoli. So these are only one cell thick. So these, there is faster diffusion of oxygen. So for example, uh, when the oxygen um, comes into the alveoli, uh, and it needs to be transported into the blood so because the alveoli only have a one cell thick surface uh, I mean uh, one cell thick wall and um, so the the oxygen can be transported very relatively quickly uh, into the blood so um, so there's a fast uh, diffusion basically and the number of transport proteins so 
This is important in facilitated diffusion as well as active transport. So the more transport proteins, so more of the carrier or the channel proteins there are, the faster rate of diffusion because uh, it will take longer to reach the point of saturation where all the uh, all the subs all the um, transport proteins will be occupied and there could be no further rate of uptake. So therefore, the number the the greater the number of transport proteins, the faster the rate of diffusion. And finally, the oxygen concentration. So this is for the active transport only because oxygen is required for aerobic respiration to produce ATP and ATP is needed in active transport. So the higher the oxygen concentration, the more ATP can be produced. Um, so the higher the ATP, the, the more the, the greater the ATP can be used for active transport. So this is one of the factors for active transport. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, don't forget to subscribe to see more of these and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up. Thank you.